Welcome guys and welcome back to another video and today we are looking at a scenario where the top 10 largest countries go to war with the world. Of course I've already done top 10, top, uh, I think, no I just did top 5 richest but today we're doing top 10 largest. To be fair a lot of these countries don't contribute as much such as Algeria, Kazakhstan, you could even argue Australia or Canada. But these are the 10 biggest countries, obviously Russia, Canada, the USA or China. Then we have Brazil, Australia, India, and I believe it's Argentina, then Algeria. No, Argentina, Kazakhstan, Algeria? If I had to guess, that's probably how it goes, but I couldn't tell you for certain. With these 10 countries, we have the USA, the number one military power in the world, Russia, the number two military power in the world, China, the number three military power in the world, China, the second most populous country, India, the first most populous country, the USA, the largest economy in the world, China, the second largest economy in the world, and of course all these countries in the top 10 largest. So it is quite a team, definitely quite a team, but let's go ahead and get right into it with Mongolia being gone, North Korea, being gone. South Korea holding on for dear life. Nepal and Bhutan, eh, they're alive for now. Bangladesh, almost gone. Sri Lanka, for some reason I colored them in on the red team. Do not know why, but they're gone. Pakistan, slowly but surely dying. Central Asia, gonna be gone very soon. And at this point, it is just these guys fighting for their life. Uh, nobody else has been able to send support. For example, down here in Africa, uh, well, like South Africa has not been able to send support to Pakistan yet. So this is not exactly how the war is going to look immediately. Russia pushing down to Georgia and Azerbaijan, capturing Baku, then pushing into the Baltics and into Belarus. Also, didn't color in Kaliningrad. Uh, they connect up with Kaliningrad and start to push into southern and central Finland. From there, they start to push into northern Ukraine and all across the border. See, immediately, the red team is gonna have a lot of victories. Even Algeria is gonna push into Morocco, capitulate Tunisia and push into Libya before being stopped. And down here in South America, Argentinian and Brazilian forces will capitulate Uruguay and Paraguay, whilst cutting off Chile at one point, not wanting to push through the Andes then trying to push into the Amazon and incredibly failing to do so. And after that insane blunder, they kind of just stop. Brazil is going to start to push up into French Guiana, Guyana, and Suriname along the coastline though. As for the US, the Caribbean is absolutely obliterated, like no chance of survival, and Mexico is slowly but surely being absolutely destroyed. In my USA versus the Americas video, I had the US win. And here the US only has more advantages with Canadian help, and Brazil and Argentina is a massive distraction in the South. Over here, mm, actually, let's just go to Australia. They might capture a few random islands, maybe make a landing in New Zealand, or two, landing in Papua New Guinea. That's, that's about it as they're just gonna be down here doing their thing, doing their Australian thing. From there, the red team is gonna make their second push, and as I stated before, Nepal and Bhutan would probably be some of the last countries to fall, but I'm just gonna be coloring them out because I really don't want those two blue spotches in the middle of all this red stuff. Bangladesh fully surrenders, and Myanmar starts to get absolutely demolished. Actually, they'll probably surrender from this. Vietnam starts to slowly die, but mm, China is losing a lot of men there. And South Korea as well is being very, very, very slowly pushed back. But with full Japanese and South Korean resistance, China is finding this to be much more difficult than they had hoped it would have been. With that, mm, I mean, Central Asia, Central Asia is just gone. Northern Iran is gone, Afghanistan dead. Pakistan dying faster than Pakistan should be, with literally no people really wanting to help them out. All on their own against China and India. 
As for, for Algeria, where they're going to be, they're going to be the first red team member to start to be pushed back almost entirely to the border. Over here, Brazil, well, they're going to continue to push up the coast into Venezuela, meeting up with some Americans, whilst only making a few small pushes into the jungles. With most of Venezuela's important land, along with Guyana and Suriname's gone, they all surrender, allowing for a broader front line against Colombia. Over here in Bolivia as well, they attempt to push into the mountains, and although it is difficult, they snake around the coast and capture a lot of per Peru's important land. They may also attempt to do the same thing with Chile. Okay, uh, from here let's go back up to the US, who once again, them against the entire Americas were winning. This time they have Canadian troops, and I guess technically other red team troops as well. This is not going to be f too difficult for them. Gonna snake around the coast, capture Mexico City, and pretty much any other important cities until Mexico surrenders. From there, South Am Central America will be an absolute breeze. Push up to the Panama, push up to the Darien, then make a landing in Colombia. F wait for Panama to capitulate and push into Northern Colombia. That was the US plan and it went absolutely flawlessly. As for Algeria, they are continu being continued to, they are continuously being pushed back all the way to their border, which they are now holding on to for dear life. At this point, they only have small, tiny bits of land in other countries, and they are soon fully pushed out, along with the blue team making a small advance into Algeria. So yeah, you really didn't last long, did you? Russia, on the other hand, is doing a lot better. In Poland, they are struggling, but they've capitulated Belarus, the Baltics, and a lot of Ukraine. As Ukraine here really has no Western support as their armies have not arrived yet. And since the war in Ukraine never happened, they still don't have all of that equipment. Here in the Middle East, uh, the Russians, and I guess technically Kazakhs as well, are being pushed back. But in Pakistan, India and China have forced the capitulation of Pak- Well, they forced the capitulation of Pakistan. Afghanistan is putting up a resistance, but has technically died. And Iran is slowly but surely dying. Now let's move back over to South Korea. South Koreans will probably still not fall. They are fighting very hard for the safety and security of their homeland, and with Japan also dedicating a lot of troops. Actually, Japan's gonna go on a few little side adventures. One up here to the Kuril Islands, where they capture a few from Russia, and one into Sak Allen, where they begin to push up, but are eventually stalled by the Russian military. Probably not for long, but for now, Japan is stopped in the north. Down here in Central Asia, despite heavy casualties between India and China, and I guess the US as well, manpower will not be an issue. India basically cuts uh, Southeast Asia into two, capturing Bangkok, a major city in the region. They also begin to push down into the Malay Peninsula, until eventually Indonesian and Malaysian forces stop them. Over here in the Americas, well, let's just get this over with. They're all gonna die. I don't care if you think it would be in two minutes or in 20 years, but the fact is these countries will, would not win. Brazil and Argentina together could defeat South America and possibly even hold off Central America. With American and Canadian support, they would most definitely win this. No doubt at all in my mind. From there, they will all start to redirect troops to Europe and Asia, where the US and Canada decide Greenland is a nuisance, so they kill it. Then they decide that Iceland is far too close to Greenland, so they kill it. Then they decide that the UK and Norway are far too close, so they try to kill it. They're stopped in Scotland, and they're stopped in the Norwegian mountains. The Americans finally got their challenge and that is where they will be halted for a while. Over here in North Africa, Algeria formally surrenders to the blue team governments, being the first red team country to do so. Now you can really see the cons consolidation of power being over here in Europe and Africa. Sadly for them, the red team has Asia, North and South America, and a lot of Oceania. Speaking of Oceania, Australia is cleaning it up a bit, capturing New Zealand, Fiji, and 
all these other islands. Papua New Guinea as well surrenders, and Indonesia gives up the entire island of New Guinea along with a few other islands as supply was horrible, seeing as unless you use local supply, they're completely cut off from the sea due to superior red team navies. Here in Southeast Asia, with Thailand fully surrendering along with Myanmar, the Laos doesn't stand a chance, neither does Cambodia, it's just gonna be some Vietnamese fighters here. The Vietnamese will attempt their best, I will say that much, but in the end, they will not win. Landing is made on the island of Sumatra. These islands are Indian. Don't know why they're on the blue team. Hey, yeah, they totally rebelled, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, the island of Sumatra is already almost gone, just to some Indian and Chinese divisions. Actually, it's fully gone. Vietnam is about to surrender and Taiwan just died. Over here in Iran, progress is slowing significantly, but they are still making just that progress. And here in Ukraine, despite Russia attempting one final massive advance, they are soon after stopped. In Finland, they start a massive invasion and are stopped. And up here in Scotland, the US is pushed back. Along with in Norway, the US is retreating by their own will, as it is being far too difficult to hold. With the Russians and Americans' plans to connect up in Scandinavia gone, the U.S. retreats all of its divisions out, and Russia gives up a large portion of the land as well. Over here in Europe itself, the blue team is pushing back and pushing back quickly. The Russians used up everything they had, and without American help, as the Baltic is and the Black Seas are cut off, and these northern seas are far too difficult to get ships past due to raiders or just due to the weather itself. There is almost no help going through here except for through Alaska and through Siberia, which is much more difficult. I mean, their only other option is to go to China, and China's gonna want it. And then it's gonna have to go up through Russia and all the way over here to the front line. That is just not convenient. With that, Russia's being pushed back at a very, very rapid pace as Ukraine is reset up as a government and Georgia and Azerbaijan are also fully, if not almost fully, brought back. Over here in the Middle East, well, India is holding their part of the front line, but Russia's is collapsing. And with the Kazakhs barely helping, a large portion of Central Asia is retaken. Over here in South Korea, the Chinese send in even more, capturing Busan, and eventually capturing Seoul, leading to a South Korean surrender. Major win, but I mean, technically Japan has taken off Sakhalin, but that's not gonna do much against Russia. They also attempt to make a landing in Siberia, but the US sends some troops and soon after stalls them. With all of these Japanese invasions at least semi-failing, the Russians are going to once again attempt to retake Belarus. I'm gonna put this in a bit more detail because why not? They start to push towards Minsk, whilst also pushing down from Lithuania and out into Ukraine. These are the three points of Russian advance. One for the encirclement, one for the capital, and one for the cutoff of supplies coming in from Ukraine. Their goal is to destroy as much as possible. Sadly for them up here in the north, they are being destroyed and with <coughs> pretty much everyone in the Nordics willing to fight, they are absolutely getting destroyed. Mm, down here in Europe, their three points goes decently well. They pull off the first encirclement and pull off the second encirclement and push into Belarus and Poland. But overall, it's still little gains and losing Belarus will not affect the blue team much, especially when they are now pushing into Russian lands themselves. <sighs> Over here in Australia, it's not looking great for Indonesia. As the last Vietnamese holdouts are dying, their morale is just dropping and dropping and dropping. With the landing in the Philippines capturing Manila and the entire Northern Islands, the Philippines surrenders. And with that, a two-pronged attack on the island of Borneo is made, one from Sumatra and one from the Philippines. This quickly and soon after overwhelms the island along with this island here, which I can never remember the name of, East Timor, and a few other islands, leaving only Java to fight with every man, woman, and child the Philippines has to offer. 
As the Japanese, eh, they're holding. And as for Europe, well, after the three points of Russia, they're gonna push back into Belarus, back into the Baltics, and into Ukraine. Although their, I guess, attack did technically work, it was such a loss of Russian life, it was not considered worth it. And now the Baltics are being fully reset up as working governments. Over here in Central Asia, with the Russians leaving, the Indians also have to give up some land as they cannot hold it on their own. Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan are fully reset up as governments, and Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan are starting to get their land back. From there, the blue team will start to push into Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan to attempt to capitulate their second country. Remember, the red team, well, maybe not all of them, but they had some issues pushing into specific areas that really, really, really did not want to fall to them. And with that, the, the red team lost a whole lot of men, whilst the blue team lost maybe a few allies. Not good for them, but the red team lost a lot more than that. And after a lot of fighting, they've now lost Kaliningrad as well. With the entire front being pushed back at a rapid race, China will be forced to send support over to Russia. Once it becomes quite clear that the Russians are no longer capable of holding off the Ukrainians and the Belarusians and the Baltics and just all of them. The Russians are starting to crack. With their Black Sea access denied and St. Petersburg fully encircled, China officially sends in its military, although well, they don't send enough to Kazakhstan as that country fully surrenders, being the second of the Big Ten that the blue team kills this point they're going to make a bit more progress into russia before the russians finally get themselves and their country back under control and stall the blue team stopping them right in their tracks after this swift uh, stop of blue team advance into russia thanks to china their team will start its own invasion that invasion being into the island of java the most populous of the Indonesian islands with like over a hundred, far more than a hundred million people living here. An absolutely insane amount on this one island, including Jakarta, Indonesia's capital. And although at a high cost, possibly even a higher one for the blue team, the island will fall securing Southeast Asia for the red team. With these areas secured, there will be a time period known as the Great Stalemate where literally nothing happens. And besides for a few border movements, I don't think much more will happen. The blue team's advance into Russia has been fully stalled. Japan really can't do anything on their own over there. They're probably gonna have to give up a bit of land actually if they want to survive. The Americans are quickly re-ramping up production and sending everything they have over to Asia. As they, besides having to keep a bit of military and in the Americas, especially in Mexico, to hold off res resistance fighters, who in this general area have been fighting back a lot. They are able to send a majority of their military over to help China, India, and Russia. Who would win here? Uh, eventually, I think the red team would win, just because, I mean, Russia is slowly dying. But if we say that the US and Brazil and Europe counter each other, China and India and Africa counter each other, and the Middle East and Russia counter each other, we still have Brazil, Argentina, Australia, Kazakhstan, Algeria, all left over. And that's just, if you ask me, enough to be any straggler countries. So maybe the red team could pull this back, but if they do, trust me, it'll be because of the US sending over its support and China and India sending over everything they have. With that, I think I'll end it here. As I said, great sailmate will continue to happen. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Bye.